Hello everybody. So today, with it being December 19th, I want to talk about building in the winter. And if, if you're selling new construction homes or real estate, anywhere where it gets cold, or if you're going to be building a house anywhere where it gets cold, this would be uh, useful information for you. So because of the cold weather, that doesn't mean that that things stop. I often get asked the question, you know, are we going to be able to start our home in December, January, February? And the answer is yes. There are some extra precautions that do need to be taken, but for builders who have been doing this and have experience doing this, it's really nothing out of the ordinary. And, you know, the weather that we have in the fall, oftentimes we've got a lot of rain, the ground is still soft, so it's it's uh, muddy outside. When we get to the, the really cold temperatures, the ground actually freezes, and it does, it does actually make things somewhat easier for us as a builder. It's easier for the excavator to, to get out there and to dig the hole. They don't have to you know, wait for the, uh, the, the ground to not be soaking wet because if it's, if it's cold outside and the ground's frozen, well, it's just one less thing that you have to, uh, to worry about. So the, uh, the other part of building in the, in the winter is making sure that we're using a heated concrete mix. So any of the, uh, the concrete that we pour, whether it's for the footers or whether it's for the basement walls or your garage floor or your porches, that needs to be a heated concrete mix. So the concrete trucks, I wanna say starting in November, they actually put a, a heater on the back of the truck and they, they heat the concrete. So any of the concrete that's getting poured or any of the trucks that are out there from, you know, sometime in November through, I wanna say, beginning of March are gonna use heated concrete. And the heated concrete allows the concrete to, to cure faster. The colder it is, the, uh, the, the longer it takes for concrete to cure. A big part of concrete, the, the mixture of concrete, is water. So you'll notice if something gets wet outside in the winter, it's, it's gonna freeze or it is going to just take a long time to, to, to dry as opposed to the summer, you spill some water on the ground and it's gone you know, within a matter of you know, minutes or an hour. Um, but in the winter, that's, that's not the case. So it does take longer for concrete to cure. So they use heated concrete that helps the curing process. It still takes longer for the walls, your basement walls, for you know any concrete that's poured in the winter to cure, but the heated concrete helps. The other thing that they do is they add a, um, a mixture into the concrete that allows it to cure faster. So it is a, a chemical mixture that they add into the concrete that allows it to cure faster. So that with the heated concrete mix helps it to cure faster. And we don't need the concrete to be 100% cured in order to, you know, we pour the basement walls, we strip the forms, and then we typically wait a week, and then we come back and we push the dirt around the foundation that's called backfilling. We don't need the concrete to be 100% cured in order to do that. Now in the winter and when it's cold, we will wait a little longer than a week. We're just gonna give it a little more time to cure. If this is a basement wall, on the inside of the basement, pushing up against the basement wall is bracing. So they put bracing all the way around the foundation so that when they're pushing the dirt up against the walls, they're, they're not gonna cave in. And really, even in the summertime, the basement walls aren't fully cured when we backfill. So that's not needed. We just need it to be strong enough to do the backfill and then we can continue on with, you know, the next step after backfill is framing the house. So that's how we pour basements and we pour footers in the winter. Now, if it is 20 degrees or below um, or, or teens, if it's in the teens or into the single digits, we will not dig a hole and we will not pour concrete. That's just, it's too cold. Things don't work properly. You don't wanna open up the ground and freeze everything out. 
It's just not a good scenario. So when things get too cold, then we can't do anything. But really, I mean, so our winter so far in Wisconsin, and this is pretty typical, we'll have, um, you know, today it is, let's see, where's my, my temperature here? Um, 18 degrees outside. Yesterday, it was seven degrees outside. The day before, it was a little bit warmer. So we'll, we'll get a couple really cold days in a row or one really cold day, and then it warms back up again. So for example, this weekend and next week is supposed to be in the 40s. So it, it's not like, you know, once the temperature goes, goes into the teens or single digits, we can't do anything anymore. We just need to wait for it to go back up to 20 or above. So we won't dig a hole unless the temperature is, you know, high teens or above. And we won't pour concrete unless the temperature are high teens and above. And again, because we don't have a whole lot of consistent days where it's just nonstop, you know, below 20 degrees, it allows us to keep moving and, and get things done. Uh, what they do when they dig the hole is they will, you know, oftentimes we schedule our concrete company and this is a big part of it is scheduling. So after you dig the hole, you don't want that hole to just sit open. Say you dig the hole, it's 25 degrees. Yes, it's gonna get colder overnight. And then the next day, you know, maybe it's 25 degrees again, but then the day after that, it's supposed to be 10 degrees or five degrees. You don't, you don't want the hole just sitting open for days on end. So we schedule and we coordinate our digs with our concrete company. So when they dig the hole, they are there the very next day, oftentimes the very next day, to, to put the footers in the ground or the footings, depending on, on where you live. And then they will go ahead and they'll set up the footings, they'll pour the footings, they'll keep that, uh, that straw or hay over the footings to, to keep that insulated. You can see all the stone that's in the ground and uncovered, by the time we need to pour the basement floor, that's gonna be frozen solid. That's fine, we're gonna bake that out just like we talked about. The footings are actually here, and you can see they've got the, uh, the straw over top of the footings to keep them insulated. So this is all footing in here. You can see the, the, the concrete there. So anywhere that you see that straw, that's where the basement walls are gonna get set on top of. So you can see the whole outline of the foundation. Those areas right there, those are the, the pads where the concrete posts will sit and your steel I-beam will run. They will come in the day after they, they pour the footings or maybe there'll be a day in between and they'll start setting up for basement walls and they'll pour the basement walls. Now, when it comes to flat work, flat work is your garage floors, your basement floor and your porches. That's what they call flat work. So the basement floor, we'll start there. So that's inside the house. We don't pour the basement floor until the house, you know, the rough mechanicals are, are usually done and the house is insulated. And we need to have power because in order to pour the basement, and this applies in summer as well, we need to have a sump pump down there that's working so that the basement's dry. And in the winter, we need to have a sump pump and we need to have heat down there. So what we will do, uh, oftentimes we'll start for, you know, we'll dig the house, dig the hole, frame the house, rough mechanicals go in. That's two months before we actually get power to the house. So the basement floor, all the stone that they poured into the bottom of the hole and they dug it underneath the house could be frozen solid and that's okay. So what we're gonna do is once we get power, we're gonna put a temporary furnace in the basement. We used to use propane furnaces. They make little mushroom furnaces or little furnaces that you can hang from the joists and they're operated by propane. So this way you could heat out and you, know, you could thaw things out before we had heat down there, but we ran into problems with doing that. With, with doing the, the, the propane heaters, there was just too much moisture and condensation down there, and we ran into issues where we would get mold on the bottom of the eye joist. Nothing serious, but extra work for us to then have to remove that and sand it off and scrub it off with bleach and water. So we now, we make sure that we get in and get in all the information that we need to the power company so that we can get power as soon as possible. Once we have gas and electric, we can get that temporary furnace hung in the basement. And it is 
a normal furnace that goes into a house. They just don't have all the ductwork hook up, so it's just heating in the basement. That's gonna thaw the basement. Once the basement is thawed, and there may even be ice and then water beneath that ice, because again, until we have power, the sump pump's not running. So there have been times where we'll have a thick layer of ice, a foot of water beneath that, um, well, beneath the water, we know that the ground's not frozen at least, but we need to thaw out that ice, we need to get rid of that water. So in order to pour a basement floor, we've gotta get rid of that. So we still have to thaw out that basement with the heat, let the, let the ice melt, let the water go down, get everything pumped out, make sure that the, uh, you know, everything's warm down there and then we'll pour the basement floor. So when we pour the basement floor, the house is insulated, we will seal the, uh, the area where the stairwell goes into the basement. We'll, we'll keep that sealed with insulation boards and insulation so that the heat is not escaping from the basement. So when we pour the basement floor, it's heated down there. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. Now the porches and the garage, that's a whole nother thing. When we go to pour your garage floor, we don't have garage doors on yet. So what we need to do is we'll either take insulation board or we'll take plywood or we'll take a heavy duty plastic and we will, we will cover the garage door openings. And then again, we've got heat going in the garage. Now for here in the garage, because there's more airspace, there's not a ceiling on in the garage yet, there we can use propane, that's that's fine. There's more than enough ventilation there and you really, you know, sticking a temporary furnace in the garage doesn't work as well as it does in the basement. So we will thaw out the, uh, cause at this point it's just all stone in the garage. And so that stone is obviously frozen solid because when they're framing, it's just, it's open to the weather. So we're gonna, we're gonna tent it off, we're gonna enclose it and we are gonna thaw that garage floor before thaw the stone on the floor before we pour the concrete. So again, once we pour the concrete in the garage, the, the stone is thawed, so the ground is soft, it's okay to pour on top of that, and it's heated inside of the garage now. Last but not least, the porches. So the porches are completely outside of the house. So you may think that that is the biggest challenge, and that probably is one of the harder ones for the the, the concrete company to do, but what they will do is, you know, most of the time you have some type of a roof or overhang over the porch. So they are gonna um, connect heavy duty plastic to that. They are gonna tent off the area where the front porch is gonna be. Now, again, this is an area, the front porch gets poured on top of like miniature basement walls. There's basement walls that are four inches thick six inches thick and they go four feet into the ground so they get beneath the frost line and they connect and tie into the rest of the foundation walls. And then there's stone inside of there. So in order to pour concrete in there, we need that to not be frozen. So they'll tent that off, same process as the garage, the basement, they will put heat inside of those areas until everything is thawed and then they can go ahead and pour the concrete. Those are really the biggest challenges. I think those are the things that people often wonder, you know, how how could we get started in the winter? I didn't think you could pour concrete in the winter. Well, normally you can't. You're not gonna pour a driveway or a patio or something like that in the winter. But when it comes to building a house, we can't let that stop us or delay us. And we have ways that we can do it that don't affect the integrity of the building or of the concrete. In all honesty, we do not have more problems with houses that we have built in the winter than we would any other time of year. Uh, last but not least, roofing. So roofing's another one that uh, I think people often wonder, how can you put shingles on the roof if there's snow on the roof or if it's freezing cold outside? So say the framers get done finishing a house and it's just plywood on the roof and then we get this huge snowfall. Well now, how do you get the shingles on the roof? Well. First off, you've got to start with shoveling off the roof. And our, our roofing company has ways of doing this. They'll get up there with shovels. They have tools to get all of the snow off the roof. Now, yes, there is still going to be maybe a little bit of snow or a little bit of ice in between the shingles and the roof. There's really nothing that, that you can do about that. But then again, at the same time, that happens in the summer when it rains. Say it rains and then it's a beautiful sunny day the next day. Well, they're gonna be there roofing the house, 
that plywood on the roof is still wet inside. It may not be wet right on the surface, but it's still wet inside. All of the wood that's used in the house is coming from a tree that has been wet. The lumber sat outside during framing or in the lumber yard. So the lumber is not 100% dry. So it's okay that the lumber gets wet as long as it's not a consistent wet. It's okay that the lumber gets wet throughout the building process, completely normal. Things will dry out as the process moves along. As you're living in the house, things will still be drying out. So they're gonna shovel off the roof. They're gonna put down the uh, underlayment over top of the plywood, which again, could still have a little bit of ice there, a little bit of moisture. What's gonna happen when that finally dries up, when the shingles go on top of that underlayment and it starts to actually, even on a day like today where it's 18 degrees, the sun's shining. So if there's a roof, they're usually dark colors, the sun is baking on top of that roof. It's heating up that roof. So even right now, if I went on top of a roof, right this instance, and I put my hand on top of the shingles, they would be warm because they attract the sun. That's gonna melt any of the ice that's beneath that underlayment. It's gonna soak into the plywood, but it's going to evaporate and dry up. It's not like you have a consistent water flow that's dumping into your attic. And now at this point too, when they do that, there's no insulation in your attic. So even if there is some water or moisture dripping through, there's no ceiling, there's nothing. That's good. That water is gonna fall through onto your subfloor and that's gonna dry. So there's really no more reason to be concerned for building a home in the winter than there is any other time of the year. I hope that that answered some of the questions that you might have if you're getting ready to have your home start, or maybe you're just starting in this industry and you wanna to talk to somebody about why it's okay to have your home built right now. Because the other motivating factor of starting now and not waiting until spring, because I'll have some people say, I do not wanna start my house in the winter. Some are adamant about that, that's fine. There's really no need to argue that much about it. But on the other hand, I know for a fact today's December, I know that in February, we are gonna have a price increase because contractors, labor, materials, everything consistently keeps going up. And so we know that right now coming in February, we're gonna be increasing our prices. Uh, it takes six months to build a home. The interest rate is gonna be higher in six months than it is today. So why not start now, you know, after hearing all of this, if you know that you can save, you know, let's say $10,000 on your overall build cost and your interest rate's gonna be a quarter of a point or a whole point or two points or three points less, not three points, I should say, you know, say the interest rate's four right now and it's gonna be four and a half in six months. That is a big chunk of money. If you're looking at paying a mortgage payment over 30 years, that 0.5% times what your borrowed amount is, is a huge amount. So if you look at it, boy, am I in high school again? My voice is squeaking there. Um, if you look at the big picture, take those things into consideration and it may just be a good idea to get started now instead of later. Well, I hope that helped. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. I would love to help and answer them. Thank you so much for checking this out. Have a great day.